was a good idea, but unfortunately the weight, the temperature, I don't know, it's bowing this and it's crooked and water's leaking out the side. I'm gonna have to figure out something else and, and that, uh, that wood is sort of bowing also. Let's figure out something else here. The great concept, everything's working great, but it's just too much water in here, I think, for, for you know, this to hold. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove this flap. It sounded good in theory at first, but it's just not working out. My three-quarter inch is just too small for the amount of water that's going here, so let's go ahead and replace that with a one inch. So what would happen if I turned off my pump? I bet my water will start back on siphon that's going from here to my sump, and I don't want that because if the power went out, I could drain my fish tank. So as it's draining, it is filling up my sump. And I'm afraid that it continue to fill up and overflow. What would happen to all my water? I'd lose it. So hoses are great, but that could cause some serious siphoning issues the wrong way if there's a power right, failure. So this is my riser from my pump. And this is a one inch tube. Obviously it just is not big enough to go over that. So I'm going to use the uh, torch here to warm this up right here and get it soft enough and pliable enough to push down down to this knot. Like a glove. I dunked it in water just to make it nice and it's tight now. It's it's on there. So that's a good way of doing it. So that's 1200 gallons an hour from the pump. That works quite well. Okay, I'm getting my fish tomorrow and my fish water is 76.6 degrees, which is perfect. I have an algae growth and we need to check so, the pH. Let's see what my pH is. Way too high. All right, so I need to clean up my system really bad. So what I'm doing is I'm dropping in a mini bale of barley straw. It treats up to 2,000 gallons, but I only have about 500 gallons in my total system. This one bale will last for six months. And then I'll drop in the other one and I'll just keep it going every okay, six so months. So how do you get rid of a algae bloom like this? It's really not that bad. It's actually lightened up since I put a tarp around it, but I need to drop it even more. So what I got is uh, some of this humic acid and what it does, it actually darkens the water so the algae will stop growing. And this stuff goes a long way. So I'm gonna use a quarter tablespoon uh, per, per my 500 gallon system. Right. So I have a quarter of a tablespoon and I'm going to drop it in my system here and I'm going to turn on the pumps let things circulate and in no time the tank should be almost black it doesn't hurt the fish it just makes it really dark to where the algae will not grow Okay, so the biggest issue that we have is solid waste. So we have solid waste coming from the fish tank into here. I added my polyfill to my laundry basket, so now I'll put that underneath. So I decided to add a T to the bottom of my riser tube, and now I'm going to measure it and cut the pipe. Okay, so that's all fitted and put in there, and as you can see, I also have an overflow that goes back to the sump. And I'll add a a bit to the main tank here. Hopefully that will darken this up enough to where my algae will be gone. This is my new tank that I am trying to use to collect solids and that's another one that's coming out of the fish tank that I'm trying to use to collect solids. We'll see if that works. We'll see you back in a little bit. Well, I was trying to make it simpler, but I didn't have enough elbows and stuff to make it simpler. So I had to do with what I had. So this right here is uh, filtering the solids that are coming from the bottom of the tank. Uh, that is an overflow right there that goes over to the sump also. Uh, the main water from the sump comes up and into here, which should filter out some solids. Three quarter inch goes into the grow bed, and then an overflow goes back to the pump. All right, so my last ditch effort to correct the pH. I got some activated carbon and some filters. 
Alright, so I zip tied one on to my overflow with the carbon in it. We'll see if this works. And slid one over where, the, where it comes in the grow bed. And that's very convenient. And I got them coming in from both the grow beds. And off my main swirl here, I got activated charcoal also. I also got a bunch of bile balls that I have in here. All right, let's check our total dissolved solids. It is at 98 parts per million. We'll see what happens. Wow, it's dropping. That's pretty cool. Hey, that's working. All right, I got some water from the local creek, and the dissolved solids is 121 but the pH level is right on the money. It really doesn't do much in a 600 gallon fish assembly. Anyway, we'll let this run tonight and we'll see what happens tomorrow. And these are the luckiest worms in the world because they are gonna be going into my grill bed and one of them is gonna be going into my compost. Lucky. Got my live fish. All right, let's see what live fish look like. Oh, fish food. That's really nice. They're so cute. Okay, so I just added my tilapia fingerlings. The pH of my fingerlings are 5.5. My parts per million is 327. Holy tamale. So now it's time to gently pour them into their new home. Ready guys? There's your new home. At least for a little while. Look at them come out. <laughs> That's so cool. I wasn't expecting them to be so active. Just coming out of the bag. That's pretty cool. I'm going to give them a pinch of food. And they are just tearing it up. That is so awesome. 